pulled out all levels of weapon and all manners of warfare. But we don't need to be afraid. We need to be spiritual people not walking in canality. Do you know who you are? You are a child of the living God. This is the season to pray. When you send your children out to school, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Your greatest weapon as a believer is the word of God. The word of God is what you need for victory in this life. This is the season for you to speak the word of God and stand in the word of God. The believer still has authority and dominion and Good afternoon, everyone. May we rise to our feet. How many of us are happy to be in the presence of the Lord this evening? Come on. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm happy to see you. Let's get some claps together.
worship. Let's begin to worship. Let's begin to worship. Say a sweet thing to the Lord where you are in the congregation. Say a sweet thing to the Lord. Somebody have a testimony. Has God something? Has God done something good for you? Has God done something good for you? I want you to say a sweet thing to the Lord right now. Where you are. Declare his glory. rescued your life just speak to the Lord in your own words
that God has given you this evening. Can you lift up your voice? Give him the praise that is due to him alone. Come on, to nobody else but a great God. To nobody else but a great God. Come on, to nobody else but a great God. Come on, women, this evening, this is for our God. This is for our King. The one that kept you. The one that saved you. The one that redeemed you. The one that lifted you up. The one that turned things around.
with that voice that God has given you, I want you to say this statement, not just because it's a song, but you're letting the enemy know, you're letting situations know, that no matter the situation, I will not be silenced. You know when you have a little child that won't stop? This is between you and your father. So I want you to declare this evening that no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances, even if things don't look great, even if things do look great, I say and I will and I
for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the eternal rock of ages, I am that I am. Let's magnify his name. Let's lift him up on high. Father, you are worthy. Receive our worship, Lord. You are magnified in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's take our seats, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to the International Gathering of God's Women 2024 Encounter Night. We have been having such a fabulous time since this morning. We had the morning glory session. We had the women in the marketplace. And we are here now. And I know that tonight is definitely going to be amazing because the latter is always greater. Amen. Amen. In Numbers 27, the book of Numbers chapter 27, it tells us of the story of the daughters of Zelophehad. Now their father had passed away, but because they were female, their inheritance was about to be distributed to their relatives, which was going to leave them with absolutely nothing zilch this is how it's always been done in fact this was the process they weren't the first set of people to be treated in this manner there was nothing new but these ladies said no 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 everyone else before our time might have been okay with this but we are not going to be okay with it we're not going to sit back and be deprived of what is rightfully ours. So something sparked up within them. There was a desperation not to be cheated. There was a desperation not to be ripped off. They must have had some kind of conviction that led to an uncommon kind of courage because not only did they appear before Moses, they appeared before the priests. They appeared before the leaders in Israel. Matthew 11 verse 12 says, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but it is the violent that will take it by force. Not sitting down, by force. Not sitting down, by force. Now this is how you are going to take by force what is rightfully yours. You won't be ripped off. Because in the book of Genesis chapter 27, we see a list. We see a breakdown of what God's heart is, what his plans are, what his intentions are, what his purpose is for mankind, which includes the fact that he wants us to subdue and take dominion. But we know that sin came, man fell, and then we're left with the world that's operating contrary to its initial design. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 7. I have seen slaves on horseback, whilst princes are walking on foot. There's like a raw reversal, opposite, but it shouldn't be so. It's due to the manipulation and the lie of the enemy, and the lie of the enemy. Now, these ladies must have had such audacity to come before Moses, that Moses himself had to escalate the situation to God. He didn't speak to his fellow men. He spoke, he went straight to God. Because they knew that they knew that they knew that they knew what was theirs and they were not going to take it lying down. This is the part that gets me because in the process of them fighting for their own case, in the process of them fighting for their own matter, advocating for their own matter, something greater came out of it. Not only did it impact their lineage, 
it impacted the whole of Israel. So God said to Moses, he stepped in, he said, look, you just give them what is theirs. Give them what is theirs. And from now going forward, this is how it's going to be done. This is how it's going to be done. Isn't this what, what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 32? When Jacob wrestled with God, he knew that something had to shift. He wrestled. He, he, he hurt himself. He was injured. He still wrestled. He fought. He wrestled. And what happened? God changed his name. God changed his name. Today, God is raising an army of women who are going to rise up in the name of Jesus to cause a revival. To cause a revival. These women, they appeared, they didn't know what they were doing. I'm, I'm sure they were thinking about just themselves. But this is why today you are here now. You are here now. This fire that you're going to catch tonight, this transformation that you're going to experience tonight, it doesn't just stop with you. There are generations to come that will be beneficiaries of it. Your communities will be beneficiaries of it. This nation will be beneficiaries of it. We know that sin came, man fell, but the precious blood of Jesus that was shed re-enlisted us back into that army of dominion. We are back there. We were given power and authority, kingdom power and authority. But the question is, do you actually want to walk in that? Do you want to walk in that dominion? Because if you don't walk in that dominion, you and that power you have access to will just remain dormant. And that will not be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. That will not be our testimony in the name of Jesus. So what we're doing tonight is bigger than us. It's bigger than us. It's greater than us. It's greater than, than the situation that you think you have in front of you. Because it doesn't just stop with you. And this is why you need to take this opportunity that God has created for you extremely seriously. Extremely seriously because it's no longer just about you. There's generations behind you. There's a nation behind you who are banking on you having some kind of audacity to come before God and say, Father, I'm taking what's mine today. I'm taking what's mine today. I'm taking what's mine today. So we're going to go into a moment of prayer. We're going to have prayer of, um, of um, expectation. I'm going to invite Amina to come up with me. I know we've prayed this morning, but the Bible says pray without season. So we are going to pray some more. We are going to pray some more because this is the encounter night. Things are going to be dropping on us. And I don't want anyone to miss it. So I'm going to start. We're going to be praying against any spirit of doubt. Any spirit of doubt. Some of you were here in the morning and probably thought, yeah, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's not for me. Any spirit of doubt, any seed of doubt that might have been sown in anybody's spirit, by something you read, by something someone said, by what your mom said, by what your grandma said, your auntie, your colleague, your manager. Any spirit of doubt, let's stand up because we're going to pray about it right now. Let's open our mouths. Let's open our mouths. Those, just as those five ladies had the audacity to go before Moses, to go before the leaders in Israel, to go before the priests, to fight a battle that changed a generation, to fight a battle that changed the system. Let's open our mouths and come against any spirit of doubt. If you know what it is, say it with, your your, with the name that it is and pray it away. Father Lord, any spirit of doubt, any lies, Father Lord Jesus, that has been told to these ladies, Father. We break down every stronghold, Father. Anything that does not glorify your name, Father Lord. We are breaking it down right now in the name of Jesus. Because every single soul here, Father, will walk in their God-given inheritance in the name of Jesus. Nobody is going to be cheated. Nobody is going to be ripped up in the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody is going to have what is theirs being given to somebody else. Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will deliver everything that belongs to them today in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouths. Let's open our mouths. Let's have an audacity. Let's have an audacity. Let's have an audacity. Let's have an audacity. Open your mouth. Speak to your father. Speak to your father. Make your case known to him. Make your situation known to him. Masoko robo soto 
Roboso Yaraba Sayaraba Kayaraba Roboso Tierre Kiarama Sataya Makata Yere Sayarama Soto Korabasaya. We are praying against the spirit of doubt. He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So if there is any unbelief in you right now, lay it down at the foot of the Lord. He said, Lord, I believe, but help. My unbelief in order for us to receive from the Lord there needs to be standing in true faith and there is no doubt in faith so I suggest right now that you surrender your doubt unto the Lord surrender your unbelief unto the Lord surrender everything that's blocking you unto the Lord because we need to position ourselves doubt is not position we need to position ourselves to receive Doubt will block your blessing. Doubt will block faith. So again, I ask you to say, Lord, help me. We break it right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. The language of God is faith. In the name of Jesus. So stir up faith in me. Cause my faith to be strong. He said, if you will act, you should ask. So right now, ask for the faith. The faith to believe. The faith to believe. The faith to believe. The faith to perceive. Because we are positioning ourselves to encounter the Lord. To encounter the Lord. Lord, give us a posture, a heart set, a mindset to receive from you this evening. Help us, Lord, to receive. Rearrange Help my us, Lord, mind. To Renew my Help mind us, Lord, to so I'm able to Help receive us, to from receive. you this evening. So I'm able to hear from you this evening. Lord, we are expectant of you you said if we should come and knock we are knocking right now you said if we should come and knock on the door right now we're lifting up our hearts and lifting up our voices to knock on the door you are opening it for us and we surrender everything that will block us from receiving from you this evening, Lord God. We will surrender everything. Everything. That thing you're holding on to, surrender it to the Lord. Because we're ready to receive. We're ready to receive. We're ready to receive that word. That transforming word. We're ready to receive. We're ready to receive. We're ready to receive from you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you know the Lord's about to do something great, I suggest you give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 He said, enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. He said, enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So for everyone that was struggling with doubts, for everyone that was not in the right mindset, you have prayed and your prayers have gone up to heaven. So sit back, be focused, 
open your ears, open your eyes, because God has a parcel with your name written on it. You must live here with it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You must live here with it in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's please be seated. Thank you, Amina. Mimi Ajala Ministries has a divine assignment to empower Christians around the world to live in the inheritance God has set for them. Our threefold focus as a ministry is to equip Christians in understanding of all God has made available, empower all Christians in various walks of life and encourage Christians to begin to live in the fullness of Christ. We are in spiritually intense times over the battle of a generation. It's God's desire in this moment to reclaim that generation and women will be his main vessels. We are inviting you to be a part of the move of God through this ministry as God will be using ordinary women like you and me. The season has come for the UK to experience the greatest move of revival and spiritual awakening in a generation. In 2025, Jesus, the light of the world, will be the UK's largest gospel outreach event in the last century. This gospel outreach event will be organized and funded by ordinary women like me and you. It will take place in one of the UK's largest stadiums and will be a night of hope, transformation and revival for the land. Sister Circle is a fellowship with an aim to create a supporting and empowering community where women of all ages and backgrounds can grow spiritually, develop strong relationships and inspire positive change. We are committed as a fellowship to studying the Holy Scriptures and supporting one another in prayer. It doesn't matter if you are a new believer or a mature Christian, there is a place for you. We meet weekly online via Zoom and in person in Croydon. Become a part of the community by joining the Sister Circle Telegram group. The QR code will be displayed after the session. Jesus Night is a prophetic night of empowerment held monthly. The night centers on worship, prayer and the word. The next Jesus Night holds on Friday the 26th of April 2024 and the location is 8 Kingfisher Square, Deptford, London, SE8 5TW. The time is 7 to 9 p.m. Today we are launching Mimi Ajala's new book titled A Marriage Worth Saving. This book is a Christian soul-searching recipe for success in marriage. Other titles authored by Mimi Ajala are also available for purchase at the Mimi Ajala Ministry Stand. This is the rise of women who love Jesus. Stay informed by visiting us on our social media platforms at Mimi Ajala Ministries or visiting our website www.mimiajala.org. Praise God. Wembley 2025. Are any of us excited to hear that? This is going to be the biggest Christian conference that we have had in the United Kingdom. I mean, what a great privilege it is for us that are in here that we know of Jesus and have been saved by him. What a great privilege it is that we have a hope. We know that there is something and someone that we can run to. But there are a lot of people in this nation that don't have that realization. The conference is called Jesus, the light of the world. And this is what we want to show them. It is going to big. It is it is going to be big, and it's been it's our biggest evangelical assignment that we have seen in this conference, or that we have been given to in this ministry, brother. The bill is also big. The resources that we need is also big, and that's why we are asking you, ladies, who are here today, who have been supporting us up until now, to also tap in and support us with this vision to make this vision a reality so that it comes to life 
we are looking at about five million pounds. But we know that the earth is the Lord's and everything that's in it. We know that he is our great provider and he will provide according to his riches in glory. So we are trusting that, you know, as you partner with us, we will be able to push this assignment forward and make sure that it is what God wants it to be. So we're giving opportunity for you to partner with us financially. Now, you could make a, a pledge where if you wanted to, you could uh, make it a one-time offering or you could pay it, um, you know, as and when you can during the, pre um, the period of a year up until the conference. But even today, today wouldn't have been possible without our partners, our ministry partners, and we are grateful for that. And we know that, you know, there's more work to be done. So we are calling on you to partner with us for this. There's a QR code behind me um, that you can scan and make your pledge and make your commitment. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, we're waiting to watch a video. Please pause. We're waiting to watch a video um, by one of our biggest um, sponsors, Compassion UK. Um, they have been a part of this ministry, especially from last year, 2023. And, you know, we are so grateful with how they have been backing us up until now. So we have a video for you to watch. And I'm just going to um, invite them to come up just to give us a bit of an insight um, on what they are about and what the ministry does. Thank you. Good evening, ladies. International gathering of God's women. Hallelujah. You know, one of my favorite scripture is in Psalms 150, verse 6. And it says that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So international gathering of God's women. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mimi, I honor God's presence and his spirit upon you. Thank you so much. And thank you for partnering with Compassion. Compassion is an international child development charity. And we work across 29 countries all over the world in partnership with a local church, over 8,500 churches, partnering together to be Jesus' hands and feet to the voiceless, to the poor, the marginalized. But when we partner with the church, we give hope to those who are living in poverty. Amen? Amen. Dr. Richard Wandera once said that poverty robs children of the dignity of choice. They don't have a choice living in poverty. What they'd rather do is to play, is to go to school, is to feel loved, but poverty speaks hopelessness and despair. But we want to break the backbone of poverty in Jesus' name. I want to show you Olive's story. Please play the video. Father used to say, God is with us, and God will always be with us. Every time that we had the Los Resistance Army or the LRA were in a village, it was fear. The fear of being abducted and being trained to become child soldiers. sent me in 
into silence. My grandfather used to give us candy for memorizing Bible verses. It gave me hope. When the war intensified, my grandfather put me on a bus to live with my mother. My mother did not share much about her life because she had her own struggles. But I remember this Saturday, she woke me up and she said, I'm taking you to church. I saw children laughing. I had no idea what was going on, but I knew this was a good thing. Thank you with a smile. Malakwa, beautiful. And my life was forever changed. That same month, I got a letter from my husband and wife, and the letter said they loved me. And at that moment, I had hope that everything would be okay. Growing up, my compassion sponsors encouraged me and continually spoke truth into my life. The Compassion Project became a place of healing and restoration. It was a place of refuge for me. I got medical care. I got an education. And it became a great reminder of the Jesus that my grandfather introduced me to at the age of five. thinking about sponsoring a child, I would say act, sponsor a child, because for me, my life was forever changed, and you can do that too. That is an incredible story of one child. The scripture verse that her grandfather spoke to her, taught her, memorized it. The Lord is my shepherd. She got to know the Jesus that her, grandmother, her grandfather knew through compassion because somebody said yes. Somebody was willing to partner with God through compassion to bring about the reality of the name of Jesus above every other name because he gives hope he gives life, and he brings restoration and healing. How many of us know that when one woman is whole, there's a whole generation of women that are behind them? Amen? That is why we're here today. That's why we're gathering. International gathering of God's women. We want to see many more children like Olive, like Ma Mamaya in Ghana, raising up, knowing God's word, his truth, his love, his compassion, his grace, his mercy and salvation. That for 32 pounds a month, you can be part of the story that God is writing in their lives. We're here all evening. And if you're considering sponsoring a child, walking with them. As you walk with them, you're walking with their mom, their grandmother, the grandfathers and the generations that are to come that their lives can also make an impact in their local community and beyond, in Jesus' name. We are downstairs. Please do come and have a chat. Do come and sponsor a child and change a life and make an internal impact, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Are we in IGOGW 2024? Are we? All right, that's because I coaxed you, but let's give a praise unto God for all that he has done, for all of his kindness. And we're asking God that he will manifest himself in us, through us. Your glory is tangible in this place Lord you're doing something great awaken supernatural faith your glory is tangible in this place Lord, you're doing something great. Awaken supernatural faith. Everybody see your glory. Lord, you're doing something great.
Let the words of your mouth be ascending into heaven. Come on. Come on, don't stop. Come on, don't stop. You better lift up your voice. Come on. said no 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 where is the hem of his garment because this oppression because this oppression let me help you let me help you let me help you let me help you Yahweh let me help you. Let your glory rest. Let your glory rest. He's in the room. He's in the room. Let your glory rest. Oh, he's in the room. I know, I know, I know the spirit. I know, I know, I know, I know. He's in the room. He's in the room. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do the impossible. Do the unthinkable. 
They said, you don't see God's face. Moses said, I don't know what you say. But God, what I'm saying is that if I have found favor in your sight, will you show me your face? There are some things, because there's a scripture that is bubbling up in my spirit. The Lord said in the, in, when we were at the 21 days of the altar, that we have walked into the season of manifestations. For the whole earth. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. I'm about to answer prayers that before this season, people didn't have the guts to ask. Moses said, I know they say we can't see your face. But Lord, if I have found favor, will you show me your face? Because of the prayer of a man, we know to ask the Lord, show me your face. Ah, you didn't come for a conference, you came for a person. Will you dare? Will you dare? Open up your mouth and ask him. We are allowed for people to, to write some prayer requests in the morning glory. We're going to give you for anyone who didn't write their prayer request. Think. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Because I don't want you to ask God for a job. Because you're not an employer. You're not an employee, you're an employer. I, 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 I don't, I shift your prayer. Will you shift your prayer? Let your, let your prayer level up. Because we serve the God of the impossible. Come on, come on. Windows are breaking. The rain is falling. For I will pour out my spirit upon your sons and your daughters. We are in a season of the manifestations. You walked in here a victim. You're walking out of here a warrior. Don't watch me pray when heavens are opening. You ain't come for a conference. You ain't come for a conference because we didn't offer you a conference. We are offering you Jesus. The same today, yesterday, and forevermore. If you read him in your Bible, but you are not living him, the devil is a thief. Jesus, show me who you are. Will you open up your mouth? Show me that you're a healer. Show me that you're Jaira. Show me that you're Rafa. Show me that you're a deliverer. Show me, Lord. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear what they say that you do. I want to see what you do. You better open up your mouth. I don't want to hear what they say that you do. I want to see what you do. Who am I speaking to? Who has the same faith? Uh, like the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, show me that you're a healer. 
that you still heal today. Show me that you're a transformer. Let the oil drop on my head. Let the Spirit change me. Let the Spirit change me. Let the Spirit transform me. Ah. Come on. You better open up your mouth and pray. Come on. How long will you be in captivity, O oh, daughter of Zion? Don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me, God. Ah. Let me say something. You know, women, we know how to act crazy. We, we, we know, we know. We, we know how to act crazy. I'm from South London, right? The Holy Ghost is working on me. Cut me up the wrong way. I'm going to show you crazy. But God said, you're showing the wrong people crazy. Because you're going to people who don't have a capacity to change your story. You're going to people who don't have the, the capacity to do nothing for you. And you are screaming and acting a fool and being crazy to them. But you come to the throne room of God and you put on a posture of dignity. But I'm waiting for women who will show me they're crazy. Because the woman said, I'm not going to let you go. Show him you're crazy. Go by ya. Cause today, God, I don't want it tomorrow. I don't want it at the next conference. I don't want it next year. My time for a deliverance is now. Come on, don't don't watch me. Don't watch me. Better pray. Better pray. Better pray. Angels are here. Open up your mouth. Something is about to break loose. Something is about to break loose. You have been round this mountain long enough. The world is waiting for you. Yet you're there in captivity. You're there, your destiny is caged. You heard the word of the Lord to you. Come on. Show God you're crazy. I will not let you go until you bless me. You can break my. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't want to hear them tell me about Jesus. I want you to show me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me who you are.
new anointing. There's a 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 new anointing.
somebody here believe in God for healing from fibroids? You believe in God for healing? Come this way. Come this way. Vicky, come here. Bring everybody here. You believe in God for healing for fibroids? You're here. I want you to lay hands on everybody, everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus, every fibroid, we curse it today. And we declare in the name of Jesus that it shrivels up right now. Shrivels up right now. Shrivel up right now. In the name of Jesus, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to come against your seed. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree over your life. Lord, this is your daughter. Remember her. Bring an end to this right now. Bring an end to this right now. In the name of Jesus. Bring an end to this. When did they tell you that you had five words? 2021. For 2000, this is 2021, you've had five words. That's when you found out that you had five words. God, do you heal? What's your name? Andrea. Father, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, will you heal your daughter tonight? Father, Lord God, bring forth a miracle. Show her that you are God the healer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I command right now in the name of Jesus, the one who healed yesterday, who heals today, and who will heal forever. Father, would you look upon your daughters tonight? Bring glory, Father, testimonies of healing. Every case of fibroid, we call an end to it in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal them in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal them in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal them in the name of Jesus. Come here, what's your name? What's your name? Melissa, and what are you believing God for? Anything that's coming against your seed. You see, every disease has a purpose. We call it epilepsy. Jesus called it the spirit of infirmity. Because every disease has an assignment to steal, to kill, or to destroy. And so we pray in the name of Jesus. Every arm of the enemy trying to steal your seed, trying to trouble your womb. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing flow. Bring an end to it, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want to ask you something. I want to ask you a question, Melissa. Would you be interested in God using you? Do you like that? I sense an unusual anointing over you. I do. Have you ever recognized that? In worship. Father, raise her as a mighty warrior 
in the name of Jesus. God, breathe your spirit upon her in the name of Jesus. Lord, raise her up as a warrior in your hands. Surrender. Lord, let living waters flow from her life. Would you raise her up as a mighty warrior in this end time army? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let her. Father, 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 let your Holy Spirit overshadow her right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. A warrior is rising. A warrior is rising. Thank you, Jesus. 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 What is it issue? You're here standing on the behalf of somebody that you love. Hold hands together. Hold hands. Hold hands. All of you hold hands. Hold hands. Who else is anybody else waiting for prayer? Come in. Hallelujah. Father, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Hold your hands together. Father. In the name of Jesus, you are the God who sees me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, will you see these daughters of Zion? Father, fall upon them. In the name of Jesus, fall upon them. Change their story. Heal them of diseases. Bring forth miracles. Let an anointing fall upon them. In the name of Jesus, will you do it for your daughters, O oh God? Will you do it for your daughters, O oh God? Lord Almighty, you are the God who heals. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take your healing. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Let your wind blow on them. And everything that has been troubling their destiny. It comes to an end tonight. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I bless your name. Sarah, could you do me a favor and just lay hands on them for me quickly? In the name of Jesus. Jesus sees you. He hears your prayer. Right here where you are, where you are, where you are. The second prayer is this. There are some women in here that the Lord says, you know. If you don't know, it's, it's, not, it's not you. Right? The, the Lord said, you know that you are living beneath the anointing of God upon your life. If that's you, you know. You know. You know. Come here, I want to pray for you. You know, you know, you know, you know. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move. Because this is the rise. Will you do a new thing, God? Will you do a new thing, God? Would you do a new thing, God? Lift up your hands. Because the Bible says that he shall pour out his spirit upon the sons and daughters. Can we see the manifestation of the living God? Father, let your wind fall upon these ladies right now. Holy Ghost, break. Break in the name of Jesus. Ask for the Bayara Bashia. Pass for the Bayara de 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 It's falling afresh on you. It's falling. 
upon them. In the name of Jesus, let your anointing, Lord, let it flow upon their lives now. Everything that has caged your destiny. Everything that has caged your destiny. Everything that has caged the anointing. Come, come. Bring that little lady for me. Come here. Come here. Come here. Everything that has caged your destiny. Everything that has caged. Lord, let the anointing. Lord, use her in the name of Jesus. Use her. Use her. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire. Fire. I'm a weapon in the hands of the Lord. Come on, Lord. Change her. Release her. Release her. Lord, release her. Release her. Release her. Release her. In the name of Jesus. Release her. Release her. Release her. In the name of Jesus. Becca, I see you. Come here. speaking to my team guys bear with me and I was saying to you guys upstairs the worship team I said to them bear with me because there's an assignment that God has given me in this hour that we have to obey but it's going to be slow okay but I, I asked you to trust me because you know what we do in the United Kingdom there's a force. There's a, there's a force against the glory of God here. It doesn't surprise me what is happening to our royal family. But there is a manifestation. There is a manifestation. The Lord said, I want to do something for the nation. Because you know what we do in the UK? That is so demonic. We don't even recognize that is a demonic force at work and at play. That foreigners will come to our land and we will pack the stadiums. won't do it here so you are under a cage because people come from outside of the land your churches take 40,000 pounds 50,000 pounds a hundred thousand pounds from the ground and the soil of the UK that needs it and they give it to America and they give it to Nigeria and you gather yourselves together and you fill up the places but when is the UK we say oh, why bother and God says you're not serious for a change the Lord said over you this morning I didn't even know that you were coming back. That you are a voice for this nation. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Unleash your oil upon her life. Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray over your daughter. 
le rebararía su corabasian de que caría ya corabayarara ya que corían de jerobo ya ya que le va 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 si ande que le va callar a base corabasian de que le va you are a voice in this generation more than the UK cas que le va corabayarara ya in the name of Jesus. Because it's going to be the UK for the UK. God's not sending you foreigners. What you need is here. What you need is here. Some of you, God's going to use you in such a dangerous way. The UK has the anointing for the UK. The UK has the anointing for the UK. We like the visitations, but we don't need you. We, we, don't, we don't need. So I could have, I could have, I could have brought a name. Have we not done it? I can bring names and I will pack out stadiums. But the Lord said, Mimi, there is something that I need you to break. Stay with me. It's the UK for the UK. 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 There is anointing in this room. There is anointing in this room. There is anointing in this room. Lift up your hands. Holy Ghost, fall upon me and send me out. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Giants are being raised in this place. Giants are being raised in this place. Oh, bring me that baby. Bring me that baby. Don't stop praying because there's an atmosphere here. Saul went among the prophets and he began to prophesy. Can I say something to you, baby girl? Maya, do you want to look at me? Look at me. I want to tell you something. When I was like nine or ten years old, my mom's here, right? My mom wanted God to do something for her. Well, I have three brothers that are older than me. Generations are being preserved. The siege over this generation has been lost. Maya, well, guess what? My mom said to God in prayer, if you will do this for me, I will give you one of my children so you can use to do whatever you want to do. I had three brothers that were older than me. But God looked at Mimi and said, I've chosen you. I pray over your life that you will be a warrior for God. That you will do mighty things in the name of Jesus. You will do mighty things for God in the name of Jesus. Now, baby, I don't think you understand what I'm saying or the depth of what's happening right now. But your mama knows. Does that make sense? Your mama knows. Okay? Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, here I am. Send me. 
Come on, would you give Jesus praise? Will you give Jesus praise? Can I have a hug? And when God starts to do great and mighty things through you, are you going to remember Minister Mimi? Okay. Oh, there's a precious oil over your life. Father, keep her away from every attack of the enemy. This one's glory, Lord, shall never depart from her house. Use her mightily, Lord. Use her mightily, Lord. In Jesus' name. How old are you, my young? Huh? You're eight years old. You're eight years old? Praise God. Do you remember a story of Samuel in the Bible? Well, there's a my little boy called Samuel in the Bible. And God chose him just like he chose you. And he went ahead and he did great and mighty things for the Lord. You shall be great in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody give Jesus praise. Come on, somebody give Jesus praise. Somebody give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed today?
Come on, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. We haven't come to a conference, we've come to a person. We haven't come to a conference, we've come to a person. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, let the glory fall. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, in a short time, I'm going to give a quick word because I believe that the Lord has done so much more than I can say. But the Bible says that as Peter spoke the word, the spirit of the living God fell upon those who heard. I believe that as we go into the time of the word, that the Lord Almighty will fall upon you. This is a transfiguration moment. You came in one way, you're leaving a separate way. In the name of Jesus. Well, the Lord had laid a book in my heart for a while because of the burden that I see with marriages, not in the world, but in the church. It is a crisis. And it is a crisis because the enemy is at work. He is. Not against your, you see, he, he's not trying to come against your happiness. He's trying to fight your seed. Your seed. The seed of the woman. 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 And so the Lord said to me, write this book. Because there is a, a mystery. There's a mystery. It wasn't a book that I wrote about me just being married. It speaks about when the enemy began his work against my marriage with Esty. And I remember there was a point in time where the Lord said to me, if you win this, you win this for your daughter. If you win this, you win this for your lineage. If you win this, many a times all we need is just the information and the spirit of quick to fall upon us, to equip us to win the fights in front of our lives. Your marital destiny is glorious. Whether you're married, whether you're divorced, your marital destiny is glorious because what happens is that even when people have become divorced, guess what? They begin to hide in shame. But there's a mystery and look at the mystery is this. When people get divorced, they don't want to feel condemned. So what do they do? They begin to justify it. But what you can say is, listen, God, I don't know where I missed it. I don't know where I went wrong. But what I'm going to tell you is that because of me, I'm going to ensure that God marriages in the kingdom. Don't get lost. So one divorce avoids hundreds of divorces. When shame is taken away. And so I, I, I really want to pray and hope. If you're single, I hope, the thing, I hope that the things that you will see in this book will open up your eyes. Because marriage, they would say, is, a, is an eye-opener. But it's better that the eye open before. <laughs> right? 
right? So I pray that the things that you will see in this book will lead you to a place in God that will allow for you to experience that all that kingdom marriages are supposed to experience. If you are married, I pray that you will find in this book the sharpening tools to cause your marriage to be a, a weapon in the hands of the Lord. Do you know that's what our lives is? Our life is a weapon. Satan's not interested in you. You're too small. Does that make sense? He uses you to get to God. So when he takes from you, when he steals from you, is because he's trying to communicate something to God. Not on our watch. Not on our watch. All right, so I want to give this to somebody, right? It's in my hands. I don't want to go home with it. So literally, anybody, just come and get it. <laughs> I believe they say, that, okay, so there's two more. Just, just rock the, well, there you go. Good night. For the rest of you, you can just pick it up. Honestly, I believe that it would be, I've been quite honest, right? I've been honest because I feel like it's so important for us to ensure. I, I think many a times in the church, actually, pretending does more harm than good. And I wonder how many marriages and how many people would experience God in such a unique way if we're just honest. Right? We just, I'm just, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be real with you. And so I try to be as honest as I can with you regarding this. And I really pray that this book really blesses you in a way that changes your story. Well, Heavenly Father, I don't have much time. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will do what only you can do in Jesus' name. All right. So can I do something quickly? Can I do something quickly differently, right? Because I want to focus on the word. Is that okay? Right? So I'm going to ask, I'm going to do the offering now. Is that okay? Yeah? So that I can focus on the word. Does that make sense? Because they, they get angry with me, right? But we have to balance it. People came for spirit, okay? Not for conference. All right. So we want to give an opportunity because honestly and truthfully, stuff like this cost. Ma'am is not, and I'm going to be very frank with you. We're not a church, so we don't rely on, there's, there's no Sunday offering that brings about these conferences. It literally is the generosity of people like you. The building that you're sitting in is not 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. We're literally banking on God blessing us through the hands of ordinary women like you. You know, the generosity of these ladies that support us has been amazing. So there's going to be details that I'll put on the screen. Guys, can you just do that quickly? If you need any envelopes, just... And if you want to, to, to I think they said something about partnership. Now, Wembley, when God gave me the, the, the an assignment for Jesus, the light of the world, I thought to myself, that, like, really, God? Like, really? But I remember... There was a time where we sat in a little room and we had a program, right? We had a little program with maybe not up to 200 women, right? And at that conference, God said, you're going to do a conference in Excel. And I said, God, but that's not how really it works. Did we sit in Excel? Right. Because if God speaks it, he does it. And he does it for a reason. It's not because I want to go into Wembley. Child knows. I, make, I don't make any money from here, just to be clear. Right? Nobody makes any money from here. Right? So there's a, there, there is money to be made. I think we heard that in, 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 in the marketplace. There's money to be made. Does that make sense? So this is not it here. But we are sacrificing our lives to advance the kingdom of God. And we are pleading with you to be generous with your giving. Right? Because honestly and truthfully, if, it, if we don't have the money, we can't do these things. It can't advance. How many of you would like for more and more ladies to be in the room? It takes, it takes, it takes. It, there's, 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 there, there was money spent for you guys to hear that this conference was here. So this is the reality of it, right? But we want and we believe with all our heart that there is sufficient within us for the gospel to continue to advance in the kingdom. Do you know it was ladies, the Bible says, that supported the ministry of women, of Jesus? 
he, uh, he just didn't dare walk in talking. But it happened because of ladies. May heaven record that I use my money to advance the kingdom and not to advance Gucci, Chanel, and different places. Not wrong with that. I like Gucci, I like Chanel, I like all of those things, right? But I can never give, and I said to somebody, I can never give to a company what I can't give to God. I have not owned anything that I have not given more than to God. Because no human hand can hold what I can or can't give God. Does that make sense? So thank you so much for that. I want to honor um, some few people in the room. First of all, my wonderful husband hates this. But I do want to give honor where honor is due. And I, and I do that because I am who I am because of you. Um, thank you for your sacrifice. Somebody says something to me that you don't understand the sacrifice that Joseph would have had to make to marry a Mary, right? Because what God was asking him to do had never been done before. It takes, a, it takes honestly somebody just to love God, to say yes to what they don't understand. So I really appreciate you with all of my heart and with all of my being. I'm so grateful to you because of you saying yes to God and giving your wife to the Lord. These women's lives have been touched. I'm so grateful to you guys. Can you honor my husband? Please? Thank you. I also want to appreciate my mothers in the house, um, both my mother in love and my biological mother, who again are the women of the warrior women in my my bloodline that caused me to be who I am. If I'm not fasting, my mother-in-law will call me and say, "Look, this thing is not in speech. <laughs> Can we go and fast?" <laughs> right? So she keeps me in check. My mother, the same thing. So I really want to appreciate you moms for everything that you do. My beautiful children as well. Um, thank you so much. And I want to honor the women of God that plow in the ground with me here in the UK. Minister Rebecca, honestly, I'm excited for what God will do through you. Um, Pastor Bookie, Pastor Sarah, Minister Isaka, I, I just really appreciate so many of you. Minister Debbie, I really, really appreciate everything that you do in here. I don't know if I've missed anybody else. Pastor Victoria was, is, was with us. I don't know if she's still in the room. But I'm so grateful to all of you for being a co-laborer in the kingdom of God. Heavenly Father, Lord, as I speak your word, speak through me. Let it change lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I am with you on a word that the Lord titled snatched but now isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 says that says the lord your your creator oh jacob you could put your name there and he who formed you oh israel do not fear for i have redeemed you i have called you by my by by my name you are mine and then the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 7, it says here, But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages for our glory. Snatched. You have to understand one thing is this, right? Is that when Satan wants to destroy, he finds a woman. Eve, Delilah, Jezebel. When Satan wants to destroy, he finds a woman. When God wants to move, he finds a woman. Eve. But because of before Eve, there was no ability to have dominion. Moses, his mother, was really the hero of the story. Because 
if God could not communicate to the spirit of Moses' mother, there would have been no Moses. There would have been no Samuel if there was no Hannah. It was Hannah that the Lord used to open up the heavens that had locked up the voice of the Lord for generations. Mary, the mother of Jesus. What I find so funny about these stories is that, especially in the book of Judges, there's the story about Samson. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord, this woman is single. She's not divorced. She's married. The angel of the Lord went and visited Samson's mother. Ah, but it's the husband. That's the... And she went to tell her husband. And the husband said, I want to hear from the Lord. And the angel came back to the woman. Because when Satan wants to destroy, he finds a woman. When God wants to build and when God wants to move, he finds a woman. So the truth about it is that whether you recognize it or not, you are significant. Whether you recognize it or not, there is a significance inside of you. You have to understand that, listen, right? Demons can see what we can't. Because when they saw the Lord of glory, Jesus Christ, the demonic forces said, why are you troubling us, that son of the almighty God? But the Pharisees looked at Jesus and said, you're supposed to be a warrior, you're not. So demonic forces have sight. They have more spiritual sight than spiritual people. And so you are looking at your life and you're wondering, why am I going through all of these things? Because Satan can see your glory. Satan can see you even though you can't see you. And so he's got in a fight with you. And you're thinking, hold on a minute, but I'm just minding my business. I just want to sing in the choir. I, I just want to get a job. I just want to pay my bills. But if you look at the fight... That you are facing and have been facing all the days of your life. This has nothing to do with you getting a job, getting a house, getting married. There is an opposition against your destiny because somebody can see your glory. And so the truth is this. You will be used by somebody as a woman. God or Satan. For a wise woman builds her house. But a foolish one plucks it down with her hands. What is that? Telling you, you have the capacity to either build or destroy. Because the things that we do in our lives either, either cause the move of God or cause the will of Satan. We don't want to hear that. Whether you like it or not, there is a significance to you. Why? Because when the Lord formed you before I, God is not careless. He's not accidental. So just because you're not a preacher don't mean that you don't have no use. God went bored one day and said, you know what? Make Sarah. There's no purpose in her. There's no reason for her. I just need her to exist. There is a divine assignment inside of you that the Lord called you by name, wrapped you up in flesh and said, go into the world because I'm going to use you as a weapon in my hands. And the minute that happened and you were placed in your mother's womb, there were forces of darkness that came in place to say, we want to kill that assignment. We want to destroy that assignment from the day of your conception because you are an assignment not a human being you are an assignment you are not a human being you are the word of God manifest in flesh for these words that are spoken out of my mouth they shall go they shall succeed in that which I have declared for it then they come back you, 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 you're not permitted to go back. So the enemy is trying to stop the assignment of God inside of your life. 
He's trying to stop. You think you're waging war against sickness and disease. No, no. The purpose of every sickness and disease is to come kill, come steal, come destroy. Because he has an assignment to end your assignment. Because if he stops your assignment, it's not you. So the Lord said, I want to do something because I have an army that majority have been rendered useless. When you look at the church, most of the people are what? But most of the people being used are That means, and, and I don't mean just on the pulpit. In the pulpit, in the marketplace, every. But there comes a day that I will pour out my spirit upon your sons and your daughters. Because I'm not an accident because I'm a female. You look at me as a female, but I'm a spirit. You see gender, God sees spirit. You see gender, God sees assignment. So we're going to look at, when the Lord showed me this, I was dumbfounded by this. In Matthew, as the word of God is going on right now, I decree and declare that the Lord Almighty pour out his spirit upon you because you have been created for such a time as this. I decree in the name of Jesus that everything that causes you to be an onlooker in the kingdom of God, that it is broken off your life in the name of Jesus snatched and so the bible says right i'm going to read it for you Whew. matthew chapter one i'm going to read verse three five and six and sixteen verse three says judah was the father of perez and zerah by tamer by tamer salmon in verse five was the father of boaz by Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth. And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom Jesus was born. Five women in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Five. Why didn't God put Sarah? Why didn't he say Eve? Why didn't he say Rebecca or Rachel? Because in that genealogy, God wanted to communicate a clear message to all women in history. Five. Five women. So if you want to understand what the message that God was trying to communicate by choosing those five women and imputing them into the assignment of the Almighty, you have to go back and look at the stories. Tamar. Rahab, if I think I missed one, Bathsheba is mentioned in there, Mary, and Ruth, five, watch me, stay with me, what was God trying to communicate by imputing these five stories in the greatest story ever told, ever told? watch this, we're going to start with Mary, Mary is the ordinary. Because in the body of Christ, we're always looking for people with crazy story. We only highlight crazy story. And so the, the woman in the church that don't have a crazy story says, how can God use me? But we don't recognize that actually. So we're sitting here waiting for something wild to happen. This girl kept her vigil. What God told her to do, she did she didn't go around the world, sleep with everybody. She, no, no, there was nothing about her life that was extraordinary. She went to church on Sunday. She served the Lord faithfully. Nothing. 
So many of you have counted yourself out of the move of God because you are waiting for something extraordinary to happen. But you don't understand that actually the ordinary against the backdrop of the extraordinary God is what brings a powerful story. She needed to be ordinary. Her ordinariness was what was needed for that aspect of the story. We keep trying to change and so what we have is people in the body of Christ who are bubbling up with the anointing of God inside of them to change a generation. Sitting there staring in awe. Well, you know what? I slept around with 20,000 men and when I slept around with 20,000 men, God saved me. And you sit there and you look at yourself and say, my story is boring. What can God do with it? The anointing inside of you is stuck because you look at yourself and think you're ordinary. But there's power in the ordinary. Some of you are looking and thinking, well, I'm not a pastor. So because I'm not a pastor, what can God do for me? And you come to church Sunday to Sunday staring at women of God that ain't got no different anointing than the one that is locked up inside of you. All that is the difference is they said yes why are you staring all? But Mary said, be unto me according to thy word. If you want to use my ordinary God, God, here it is. Here I am. Send me. Because God's, God's, God's not going to appear in the cloud and give you a calling into ministry. Into ministry. Your job is the ministry. Your job is the assignment. God's not going to tell you and give you a business idea that's going to take you away from those children. Because that, those children are the assignment. There's glory in the ordinary. There's purpose in the ordinary. Some of you need to stop asking God to shift you from the place that you were born for. children of God have been rentless, rendered useless by the enemy because they are waiting for God to change their assignment. He ain't going to do that. Your ordinary makes sense because if, 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 if Mary was not a virgin, then she could not have been used. You, you understand what I'm saying? Her, her clean story was beautiful. There was nothing extraordinary about Mary. And so there is nothing going to be extraordinary about you. But the whole thing in about you is about the extraordinary God that backs the assignment that he's placed in your life. I began to read about a woman called Susanna Wesley. I was like, God, what are you trying to show me? This woman was the mother of about 14 children, and that was her assignment, to raise them up in the way of the Lord. She said, God called me for these kids. And out of her embracing her ordinary, came forth the greatest evangelist of the British history. John Wesley. He's dead, but his buildings still stand. Because when God wants to cause there to be a move, he finds a what? A woman. Who's not trying to change her assignment, but embraces it. Get her from the sidelines. Stop being excited about what other people are doing. And say, God, release the anointing of God over my life. Because when I go to heaven, God's not going to ask me for a report about somebody else's destiny. Oh, that was great that you commented on her message. Well, what about the message I gave you? When you don't have eternal mindsets, you spend your life doing foolishness. And because everybody is doing foolishness, you think it's okay. No, 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 no. Help me to number my days. 
because I'm an assignment and I must go and give an account of what I did with my life. And so this thing that God has been telling me and I keep saying, do you know what happens? It's called a lying mirror. Watch this. The Hebrew word for virtuous is sheol. That's the Hebrew word. I went and I looked up what is the meaning of sheol. Sheol means it means strength. It means courage. And it means wealth. What one of those three words describe women of today? Because there is something called a lying mirror that causes you to alter who you are. And so from generations till now, Satan has been going through Trying to alter. That's why when Jesus came, he didn't just find men. He found women. He said, no, no, no. I need to shift you back into what you were created to be. Because in you is purpose and destiny. And so in a time where women were rendered, rendered useless, Jesus was the first one that empowered women. They say, oh, the church has, no, 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 no. You are the one oppressing women. Jesus In a time where the testimony of women didn't matter. Meaning, have you read your Bible? It said Jesus fed 5,000. It means 5,000 men. Because when they were counting, no points counting because their life was irrelevant. But Jesus said, no. I'm going to resurrect and I'm not going to show Peter first. Because I need to alter. I need to alter the, I, the definition of woman to woman. Because they've been lying there dormant, doing nothing, living. What are, they, what are you going to do with title? Someday I don't wear my ring. Nobody cares. <laughs> Father, make me a wife. Okay, to do what? <laughs> a whole identity is banked. It's a demonic alteration, a lying mirror. Your whole identity. Some women have money to buy a house. They won't buy a house. They're waiting to be married. But the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds favor before the Lord. Right? So bring something to the table. You are favor. But your whole identity is just locked. It's a demonic lying mirror. When I saw, you know, I, I have seen courage. And I have seen strength, but I have never seen wealth. That inside of a woman is the anointing of unbelievable wealth. But the brokest people in the church are women. But the greatest spenders. I, I'm, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. My husband has handled levels of wealth that I didn't, have it, I didn't have it in my mind growing up to pray that my husband would. No, no, it wasn't there. But I have seen with my eyes that no matter the season of life he has gone through, no matter, there has been sufficient money. Because even when I don't have, I'll be going shopping. Satan had lied to me that a woman and wealth don't go together. So the demonic force of the enemy is to alter the definition of woman to you. So we just sit there in the church being damsels in distress, wait, waiting for someone to rescue. If I, if I marry a rich man, rich man wants to marry a rich woman. <laughs> There's beauty. And power in the ordinary. Somebody say that. <laughs> then there is Tamar. Tamar's story confuses me. Genesis chapter 38. <laughs> this lady, some of you wouldn't have read this story. This woman 
is a Canaanite. She's a sinner, basically. She has no business with God. She marries Judah, right? And his son is so wicked that he dies. And because of his sin, she's now rendered a a widow. So she's living on the lack of oppression because of the failure of her husband. God kills her husband. And then she marries the brother. Who is supposed to be, according to the law, a kinsman redeemer. Meaning that the shame of barrenness was supposed to be taken away from her. There are some of you who have hoped in people. And they've let you down. Meaning, you've come to the church. And the church where you're supposed to find solace has broken you. You've trusted in the husband. You've trusted in the friends. You opened up your heart. And the husband, instead of giving her her seed and making her a mother, he would waste it on the ground. But use her for pleasure. You know what would be better? Is not to come near her at all. But to use her for your pleasure. But not to give her what is due her. This is what happens to so many women. And then they become so hardened that they come up with a logical plan to take what is theirs. So this woman decides and she comes up with a plan that actually, hold on a minute, Jacob now says to me, don't marry anybody, right? Wait for my second son because because the second husband was doing that, God kills him. So Jacob says, don't marry anybody, right? And guess what? I'm going to redeem you. The son grows up and she watches while this man leaves her in bondage. He leaves her in bondage and she comes up with a plan of her, of her own selves. But we don't understand when we allow ourselves to be hardened. You're sitting there because you got, you, you've had heartbreaks in the past. Somebody has let you down in the past. I'm not going to church no more because no church is your refuge. If one pastor lets you down, go and find another, another church. Because church is your refuge. And she, don't, she didn't understand. She pretended to become a prostitute. She didn't understand by doing so, she surrendered herself to the will of Satan. Sometimes, in order for us to take what is ours, because we have been hurt, we surrender ourselves to the wisdom of Satan. And then I look at that story and I think, well, why is she there? This story is so, is, 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 is a confusion. I don't know why it's in Genesis And I definitely don't know why it's in Matthew. But the Lord says something. He said to me, because you didn't understand in the book of Genesis, I made a promise to the woman that it don't matter who lets you down. I have come covenant in myself to you to ensure this. All right. Because Satan will stand at your heels waiting for you to fail, waiting for you to make foolish decisions, waiting for you to have accidents, waiting for you to be a fool. But I have covenanted myself with you that while the enemy may stand at your heel waiting to destroy you, I have anointed you that you shall crush the head of Satan. So she was acting a fool and Satan was clapping for her. Satan was rejoicing over her, but he didn't know that Matthew was coming. He didn't know that Jesus Christ has the capacity to walk back in history and redirect the history of a woman. Watch Bathsheba, same thing. Sometimes you're minding your business. She wasn't doing anything to cause trouble. But Satan sees the glory of God in you. He sees the anointing of God inside of your life. So he decides to still, in one moment, she loses dignity because she's a married woman now being forced to sleep with a king. She loses purity. But she also loses a righteous husband. Have you ever thought what it would have felt like for Bathsheba to know that my husband's dead because of me? The weight of such a shame keeping her captive from the glory of God that is within her. But God said, you don't understand something. I'm not trying to just redeem your story. 
God takes this woman who loses everything and is in those moments of pain, heartbreak, of destruction that the enemy tries to cause us to see ourselves as a victim. Lying mirrors. To make you to believe that, do you know what? The world is against you. Don't tell me what is against me. Tell me what is for me. Stop gathering us inside buildings to tell us that we have been done wrong by. Tell me what it is that God has put inside of me so that I can go and become the woman that God has made me to be. Because when you find purpose, certain things drop off of your waist. They, they leave you. When you stand up as the warrior that you are, there are certain things that you are struggling with that leave you because you have recognized who you are. And so, the Bible calls her Bathsheba. But the book of Chronicles calls her Beth Shua. You say, well, what's going on here? Well, if you go back in line, in the book of Genesis, you see Shua, the Canaanite. What God does is he literally, by Bathsheba, not only does he change her story, she goes from a victim to a woman of influence to stabilize the prophecy that was over her son Solomon. But not only does God do that for her, he walks her back. I see God doing so for you in the name of Jesus. He walks back through the lineage of Bathsheba. The enemy was rejoicing over her life. He was rejoicing over her failures. He was rejoicing over her shame. But God was waiting for an opportunity to step into her lineage. And he walks back into her lineage. And not only does he redeem Bathsheba, he redeems her bloodline because Shua was, Beth means daughter. Shua is the woman. Was the woman in the book of Genesis chapter 38 that was a Canaanite. But God said, I'm not just redeeming Bathsheba, I'm redeeming her history. This is the God that you serve. This is the God that's saying, listen, I know what your life story is, but I'm not just trying to save you. I'm trying to walk back in your lineage and I'm, I'm trying to move the di direction of your family bloodline through you. But you're rendered useless, staring in awe, commenting on social media. But the Lord sent you here so that you can see clearly. So that you can see who you are. So that you can see clearly. So that you can see the assignment and the anointing of God over your life. And then there is a Rahab. Rahab was a woman like so many women who have the garment of shame. Shame is deadly. What shame does is to incapacitate, incapacitate, how do you say the word? In incapacitate you. To render you useless. Because, because I'm a, a woman who gave birth outside of wedlock, God can't use me. So you go to church consistently because how dare you, as a woman with a stain on your garment, lay hands on, you don't have a clean testimony. So women, you're divorced and you just feel like, well, I shouldn't have been divorced. But at the woman at the well, God looked at this woman who had five failed, you have one. She had five. God said, come in my army. Come, let me use you. Come in my army. Come, let me use you. Because Rahab understood one thing. If the God of the heaven and the earth knew how to create this entire universe out of nothing, he can do something with my life. And so rather than hiding from God, running away from the anointing, she ran to God and said, pour your oil on me. Here I am, Lord, send me. She had, how does God go to her land and find a prostitute? But no, God didn't find the prostitute. The prostitute found God. She said, I'm not going to allow you to keep me living yet dead. How many of you are living, breathing, 
but your, your assignment is dead. Because of the mistakes that you've made. You have allowed yourself to be convinced that you're not good enough for the oil. The Lord said, no, I need you. And so this story of Rahab is so powerful because the Bible says, as she goes to the men of God, they do something, understand the power of <laughs> scriptures. They give her not a purple rope. They give her a scarlet thread. And they throw it at her because they say, do you know what? We see your past, but we see your faithfulness. How many women in the church have made mistakes, but we don't, we don't recognize the things that they're doing good? We don't recognize the, the level of strength it takes for them to have those scars and still show up every Sunday. We don't recognize the strength that it takes. They've got more strength than you that, you that have not got no scars in your life. We don't recognize their faithfulness. We don't recognize that the enemy tried them, but they're still there. And so Rahab ran to God and God threw her his blood. And he said, bind this blood to your scars. Bind this blood to your mistake because you have to understand something, Rahab. The blood has the capacity to wash you clean. The blood has the capacity to change your story. The blood has the capacity to restore you. The blood has the capacity to redeem you. Here is the blood of Jesus Christ. Bind it. And so we have in the scripture the ordinary, the crazy. The abused, the flawed, all of them, God said, pack them together so that I can use them. Everybody rise to your feet. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is waiting for your yes. God is waiting for your story. God is waiting for you to stop, to, to stop looking in awe of other people. He wants you to be the wonder. I want you to begin to open up your mouth and begin to pray. Father, here I am, send me. You called me because you want to enlist me into your story. You called me because you want to use me. It don't matter what I am. It doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter what I don't have. If you can use anything, Lord, in this day. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. You're going to be sick and tired of being in the sidelines. Take my hand, Lord. You're going to be tired. You have to be tired Touch my heart, of watching God do great things through other people. Through me. If, you can use if God can use anything, anything Lord, you can if he can use Rahab, he can use you. If he can use Mary, a child, he can use you. you, can use you. If he can use crazy Tamar, you can use me. he can use you. waiting on you. you can use anything. This generation needs you. you can use me. For I will pour out my spirit upon your sons and your daughters. Hands, Lord, and my feet. I will pour out my spirit. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use Just like Rahab, I want to give an opportunity to anybody that's in this room and you know that you don't have Jesus as the Lord of your life. That's step one. Or you knew him and you ran away from him. Or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. We're right where you are. Just put your hands up. Just put your hands up. Jesus, I'm saying yes to you today. Jesus, I'm saying yes to you today. Jesus, I'm saying yes to you today. I see your hands. I see your hands. Ushers, can you help me? Can you pass some forms today? I keep your hands up. The Lord sees your hands. The Lord sees you. Put it high. Jesus, I'm running to you today. I 
didn't come to a conference, I came to a person. His name is Jesus. I came to Jesus. The author and the finisher of my faith, I came to Jesus. Who's going to take my crazy and make it into something? If you can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Come on. You want to say yes to Jesus, put your hands up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see your hands. I see the hands going up. Put it up. You want to go back to Jesus. Right where you are. With your, with your hand lifted up high and your other hand on your chest. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. I make a fresh commitment to you today to make you the Lord and Savior of my life of my destiny I bind the scarlet thread of your blood that has the capacity to wash me thank you Heavenly Father in Jesus name we're going to quickly pray for every prayer request Minister Tosin, will you come upstairs? Come please. Quiet, will you come up? We're going to pray as she ministers. Has everybody dropped their request here? We're going to pray over this. Thank you, Lord. If you put your hands up, would you just, if you put your hands up for the prayer, just lift up your hands one more time. Let the ushers see you. There are some people over here. If we can give them some so that we can help them in their journey. We don't just want you to continue to walk in the faith. We want you to become a weapon in the hands of the Lord. All right, for the rest of you, begin to pray. Father, use me. 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 In the name of Jesus. Come up here for me, please. Ushers, if there is anybody, if you have your prayer request and you want it to be prayed for, quickly just lift up your hands so that we can pray, we can take it and bring it to the altar. This isn't a table. This is the altar of the living God. The spirit of the living God hovering over this table, bringing answers to your request, bringing solutions to your crisis. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who's been blessed tonight? Who's ready for the falling of the, of the, of the outpouring of the Spirit? I want you to begin to pray. Because as you pray in this moment, the Spirit of the living God is going to change you into another man. That's Oko Rabaya Siande Kirabashia Taya. Lady de de Bosch and de Yando Kurabaya. Kayaraba Sotia. Will you open up your mouth? You're a virtuous woman. A woman of war. Give your destiny rapt attention. Father, in the name of Jesus, wherever the enemy has had a hold over my destiny, let the blood break it right now. You 
Jesus, for your glory. Oh, Lord. Use us for your glory. Oh, Lord. Use us for your glory. Use us for your glory.
seats. Just going to quickly go through um, some reminders. So if you drove and you used the car park, please remember to put your license plates downstairs at the reception. Um, the books that Mimi spoke about, we've got her new book and also her previous book, The Life God Has For You, is available um, downstairs as well um, for purchase. Sister Circles, please, please, please join the community. Speak to one of the ushers as well. And if you want to give, you can go to the ma'am desk and speak to them. So I'm just going to invite Mimi up um, quickly as um, we close this evening. All right, there's a few things and people that I want to celebrate today. And I want to do it quickly, and, and if you don't mind, um, if you will do these things for me. Um, the, first, the first thing I want to do is that I want to call Sarah Obeng up. She is our head of events. And has served with me in ministry since I was 19 years old. She has been faithful. But God is lifting her up, and she's moving to Canada to be with her husband. But she's still, she's still the head of events, because Colby told us you can work remotely. <laughs> so I really want to just appreciate you, Sarah, because it is such a blessing, the team that God has given me. Your spirit to me has been priceless. You have served me with all of your life. I have watched you serve the local church. And I am watching the Lord decorate your destiny. Because he is a rewarder. I've never been able to give you anything. But you've always said yes. can we stand up and just pour out a blessing because we don't see the people who go without sleep so that you can have your testimony father in the name of Jesus we pray oh God father for your daughter Lord may you clothe her with glory father may you fight for her may you decorate her life oh God with your goodness May you remember her, oh God. Every labor of love, remember. May you make her name great. Father, make her a generational blessing. We decree that the fruit of your womb is blessed. In the name of Jesus. We decree that the fruit of your womb is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just want to appreciate you. Everybody at MAM, we love you. We are so grateful to you. And even the seas will not separate us. Amen in Jesus' name. And then can I ask you guys to be seated, not to, to stay standing, stay standing, sorry. And do something that means the world to me. Can I ask a favor from you? And can I ask if you will sing something for her? Yeah. My little girl is going to be 10 years old tomorrow. And she also gives up her little, her mum. Because rather than planning her birthday party, I've been praying and fasting and forgetting stuff that to do with her. But I want you guys to just help me celebrate Eden Grace Ajala. <laughs> Mommy loves you. Daddy loves you. You are a princess. Just a little testimony about her. We prayed for her. And so we gave her her name 
even before we knew she, we were having a girl. We bought her clothes even before we were told we were having a girl. And the Lord gave us this little precious gift that such a warrior, such a mighty woman, that I am so sure that the gift of God upon my life and upon your father will not end with us. Can you guys just stretch out your hands and bless her? Why, Rebecca, you just sing her happy birthday. Everybody, can you help us? So we're going to sing this loud and bright for Eden Grace, right? Who's the 10 year old? Can you tell? So we're going to sing aloud, loud, everyone, okay? once again for everything that you have delivered in our lives today. Thank you for the transformation, Lord, as we are stepping out, Father Lord Jesus. May everyone who sees us and encounters us know that something has shifted and something has changed in the name of Jesus. Go before your daughters, Father. Straighten every cro crooked path in the name of Jesus. May they arrive home safely in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. See you again soon, ladies. <laughs>